Let, let's start with the book first. First of all, this tour, is it? Uh, what's it like going out on a book tour, especially uh, especially after a fight? I mean, it's got to be pretty grueling. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. You know, I'm just... Uh, I'm just surviving through this whole thing, and yeah. hopefully I make it through. But yeah, they got us doing like crazy stuff you wouldn't believe. But we're doing all the signings, and then they set us up for like 15 to 20 like radio interviews right in a row, and yeah. and it takes about two to three hours to get through each one. It's, it's pretty tiring, but you know it's it's all gonna pay off. It's worth it. Yeah, uh, most of the people you talk to are kind of probably more casual fans, or uh, you know, on radio, more yeah, lighter yeah. interviews. Yeah, that's, that's nice. They're just more casual fans yeah. and just talk about the book and the sport is that better especially since you uh, it's kind of what lousy timing i mean you lose the title and you have to go on the road right away and I, what, talk what about they, losing the title they, and... they, they said it matches perfect with the book the belt is just an accessory yeah. so i guess <laughs> yeah. so this book why'd you want to do it and you know actually, uh, how detailed I, did it get actually i didn't want to do it at all you know yeah. everybody forced me to t- talk me into it and kept bugging me and yeah. finally said okay i'll do it it took about a year and a half to uh do and uh, yeah, I was just uh, just conversing back and forth with Dave Weintraub, and uh, finally got the book out. And, and now that it's out, I'm, you know, I'm I'm glad it's out. There's a lot of stuff people only get to see the fighting and the fighters, and this is kind of like a journey about you know what it takes to go through the whole career and you know dealing with uh, dealing with uh, more stuff than just stepping in the ring and fighting. And 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 it's a it's a chance for me to. You know, tell the story from get get it from the horse's mouth. You know, from from me, me personally. So, have you gotten feedback? Like, I, I was reading um, Josh Gross as I said that uh, Dana White was quoted as saying he was kind of angry about the book. Like, ninety percent of the book isn't true. Oh, uh, what could be in there that that he would be that angry about? I have no, I, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? I, I, didn't, I didn't really know. Did you cover the period of time when you were kind of you guys were on the outs and kind of bickering a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah, we covered through that stuff, but we didn't really get into great detail about yeah. it. You know, just just uh, what was going on uh, with me and Dana and Anna uh, with K1 and stuff. But we didn't go delve into it like really deep or nothing. But you don't think it's going to be the kind of a thing uh, that's going to adversely affect your relationship or you know something crazy like cost you a title shot, the rematch, or anything like that. Um, no, I guess no, we got to see. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it, it's just not that type of level. Actually, Dana and and well, the UFC has been. Uh, Lorenzo called us twice and. It really wants us to to rematch Frank Edgar right away. Actually, Good. we were just trying to get any fight we could because I'm still in shape. I'm like, I will jump in the ring, and he's like, No, 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 wait. We want to push you back four months. We want you to fight Frankie. So I'm like, Okay, okay, we'll do it. So what do you think the target's gonna be? I know, I know. I saw you yesterday say that August. August. Yeah. Um, is that is that soon At first, enough? I thought it was early August, but then they said Frankie and his wife are uh, probably expecting a, a kid, so we're probably gonna look in later August, maybe. All right. Let's talk about the fight a little bit. Um, I heard Pat Militic. I was actually on an ESPN show today, and Pat Militic said, "Close fight, but he thought you landed the better shots, and you know Frankie moved around and was you know effective with the cage control." Have, have you watched the fight? How did you feel as you were fighting it? Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't watch the fight. I mean, of course, when you're fighting, you're constantly thinking you're winning. You know, uh-huh. you're you're really biased. You don't know what the other guy's doing. You know, but yeah. uh, I didn't get to see the fight. But uh, you know, that's the kind of reviews I've heard. People. People saying I did enough to win the fight, and you know, I guess there's only one thing we gotta we gotta rematch. Yeah. What was your reaction in the cage when you first heard the the one score, the Douglas Crosby score, 50-45? I didn't even hear the score. I was just. It didn't look like you did. Yeah, I was just waiting to hear them say who the winner was. You know, I wasn't really listening to the scores. You didn't. You didn't look like. uh, Did you think you won? I, you know, had no reaction when they announced Edgar. Yeah, I was just like, I was just like looking. I was just irritated that that it even went to the judges. Yeah, I knew it wasn't one of my best performances, so I was just irritated how the whole thing was going. You know what I mean? So I was just like, I know, I knew. It's not like I was sh- out there shining that night. You yeah. know what I mean? So I was just in that mindset, kind of, you know, after after it was done. So what do you think of someone scoring at five nothing? Um. Yeah, you know what? I I really don't really have any anything to really say about it. Uh, I'm sure I won one of those rounds, but um, you know, whatever. I'm you're like, you're like I'm amazed that you're very laid back about this, and you're generally a guy who's vocal. Um, I'll use a strong word. Complain sometimes after losses. You know, <laughs> how come how come not this time? What's changed? Is it is it you know the maturity um, or? It's different. No, no. Well, the only loss I complained about was was them uh, rubbing Vaseline on GSP, and, right? And that was the only one. I, I can't really think of any other one that I've ever really complained about. Yeah. You know? All right. Last one. Uh, craziest moment of the book tour. Did you set up that takedown with the Fox oh. News guy in the north south position? Because everyone's like, "There's no way that happened by accident." <laughs> no. You know what happened was 
he was like, do a move to me. So I'm like, okay, I'll do a move. And he's like, okay, what? Which one? And I'm like, okay, I'll just uh, do an arm drag and do a choke. And then every time I go for the arm drag, he'd start defending it. And I was like trying to show him the choke and he's like stiff. So I'm like, okay, whatever, big deal. So then we, we walked to, to the set and then he's all, okay, do something. I'm like, okay, well, you could probably hit pretty hard. So I'll just take you down there. When I took him down, I just felt him exploding. I'm like... <laughs> And I was just like relaxing, you know, two days after the fight or even a day after the fight. And then he's just trying to explode and do all this stuff. And I think you had flashbacks to the fight. That was not a good, that's not a good position for a guy in the media. You don't want to look up and have that in your face. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was funny, man. Uh, and the other one I saw was, uh, did you put someone in an arm bar uh, while they were sitting oh, down yeah, in New York? Yeah. That was good. Yeah, the, the Opie and Anthony show, that was, that was pretty fun. He didn't show any resistance? You no, know, no, he just let me do it. So there that you go. was cool.